and gentlemen, Cal Cobra here. We are testing out the legend. Nocta Macro was kind enough to send me a sample unit here. So I'm just going through the paces. We did the quick unboxing. Keep in mind that unboxing was a, again a sample unit. So I'm sure a um, end user consumer purchase unit will be a little different. But anyway, what I want to do is I want to test out field and park mode. I'm going to start off with field mode. That's what you would use for relic hunting. So we can see here in the legend, you've got basically four modes on the top here, right? So we've got park, we've got field, we've got beach, and we've got prospecting, right? So very similar to how the Equinox is laid out. And we're going to test out the field mode. We're using multi, so we can see here the M. Uh, that's the frequency. We're using multi-frequency. You could use whatever frequency you wanted just by changing the frequency button. 4, 10, 15, 20, 40, or multi. So I'm going to stick with multi. Okay. Then we have at the top here where we see this looks like a C. It's actually a, uh, the ground. This is a conductivity scale. So this unit goes from zero to 60. So we got a new scale to learn here, yay. Um, zero to 60, so there's a little bit more resolution than the Equinox. Um, <clears throat> less than the most of the units people are used to that are gonna do one through 99 or zero through 99, whatever. But at any rate, um, that basically gives you the capability to, if you use this horseshoe, hopefully you guys can see that, the horseshoe right here, uh, that gives us the capability to change the default setting there. So right now, if we go for all metal, right? This is ground, so it just basically is supposed to notch out the ground minerals, so at the end of the spectrum beginning of the spectrum and then here we've taken out iron so it's kind of similar to the horseshoe on the equinox except that it actually gives you capability to do more uh, different settings rather than just iron or, or all metal or no all metal so at any rate here's the plan so what I want to do this is not scientific uh, I just want to let people see how this thing sounds. So right now I'm set up in full tones. This box right here. Cigar box, open it up. Okay, this is all stuff that I have found over the years. And I'm going to use this stuff to test. So right here we've got a lot of coins. Okay, so down here we've got... Some Doug coins, relics, some jewelry, uh, more relics. So we're going to go through these, just kind of see how they sound, get an idea how the 60 tones works on this. Uh, let's see how the silver and the gold sound on there. And um, and we got, uh, we got a $5 gold, US $1 gold. Silver. So we'll check all this out and we'll see how it sounds. So let's start off. Let's go to the easy stuff. Let's go to the coins. So we'll go from big to small. So, all right, let's start off with the silver Morgan dollar here. So this is a Doug dollar. Okay, pretty good. Full 45, here's another one. Okay, great. All right, now we're gonna go to a seated quarter. Okay, so now I wanna switch over to a clad quarter. Can we tell the difference between a Doug clad and a silver? Fifty one, fifty two. Let's put the silver one back in. Mm. 
Okay, so I alternate between the two, it sounds pretty much the same. So the uh, quarters are gonna be right there, 52, right around that range. Okay, here's another one, just to make sure. So we've tested a clad quarter, a seated quarter. Let's go for this barber quarter. Yep, so quarters are gonna be right around 50. 50, 52, so that's quarters. Dollars are going to be right up to 60. Let's take a look here. Here's a quarter that got clipped. Let's see what a mutilated quarter looks sounds like on here. Pretty much the same. All right, let's move on and go to some silver dimes. Okay, so we've got a seated, a barber, and a mercury silver dime here. Let's see how they test out. I'm gonna start with the merc. So right around 46. Okay, that's a merc. We'll go to a barber. So here's a barber, a little born. Okay. So 45 looks like the sweet zone for silver dimes. And here is a little bit toasty seated dime here. So here we go. Let's see how this sounds. Loves it. Boy, it does pretty good just air testing from the top. So, all right, dimes sound pretty good. 45 seems to be the sweet spot. Let's move over and do some pennies. So, all right, we've got all kinds. I want to do some zinc pennies. There's another silver dime, we don't need that. Some Indian head. Okay, let's start off with the crusty zinc here. Crusty zinc comes right in at 38. Okay. Let's go with a wheat back. Hmm. Hmm. 42. Could I tell the difference between that and this crusty zinc? Yeah, so the zinc's 38. An early teens green wheat penny is a 42. So very nice. That's that's a good uh, sign there. Let's see what this one is. This is a later. This is a Canadian penny. All right. This one just got thrown in. Canadian penny comes in at 45. Okay. Here's a kind of one of those orange copper Lincoln. So that's going to be probably 50s, 60s. 45. All right. Great. Pennies sound pretty good. No problem there. So here's a new, it's probably hard to tell, but this is a new zinc and the shield on the back. So let's see if it's consistent. So we've seen the copper pennies go 42 to 45. The crusty zinc came in at 38. Hmm. Okay, well this one's not crusty and it comes in at the bottom end of the scale. So that came in as a 42. Let's see how this 1887 Indian head rolls in. 40. That's a pretty big spread for pennies. 38 to 45. That's a big spread. I'm not sure what to make of that yet. That's one of those kind of things I think you really won't understand if it's a benefit or if it's too much uh, until you hunt so okay so i think that's good test for coins um we do have i think a v nickel here a couple nickels all right got a couple crusty v nickels here let's see where these guys come in Twenty-five. 
24. All right, so that's the V-Nickels coming on at 24, 25. So that's a good segue to test this $1 gold coin right here. So let's test this guy here. This is a 1856 San Francisco Mint $1 gold coin. And uh, we'll test it out here. See how it does. See how it compares to the V nickel. Okay, so it's a little under a V nickel, which is about where it should be, really. 23, right around 23 for a US, for a US $1 gold piece, right around 23. Okay, now we're going to test a U.S. $5 gold piece. Thirty-seven, thirty-eight. Okay, good. We got left here. Uh, a couple of tokens. We'll just run them through for grins. This is one of those heads I win tells you lose quote-unquote arcade tokens for adult arcades in the like 60s and 70s and you find them in Golden Gate Park and other places. 43, it's about the size of a quarter. Here's a real token, good for six and a half cents in trade or six and a quarter cents in trade actually. So let's test this one out. This is something you'd expect to find if you were in a ghost town or demo site or Somewhere like that where you're relic hunting and there could be tokens. Mm, that sounds nice. You're not going to walk by that. It gets pretty good depth on that. Great. Okay, so here's a couple of relic -y things. These are some awesome cufflinks that I found at a ghost town metal detecting. And they're silver with like enamel fancy enamel designs on top. So let's see where these come in. That'd be interesting little relic. Yeah, I like that. Okay. So here's a an eagle button with the iron back. Let's see how that sounds. Looks good. 18, 19, okay, here's a larger buff, uh, button. So it's not dug, does still have that little iron pin on the back, steel pin, so let's see where this guy comes in. Oh, that's interesting, that steel pin seems to uh, inhibit it from being able to detect this button. Okay, this is going to require some experimenting, so that's interesting. Hmm, I don't know if that's good or bad. If that's going to silence a button, that's a pretty good size button there. That's like a coat button. We're going to have to do some experimentation there. Okay, let's move on. Here is some jewelry, although granted most of it's junk. Oh, here's an underwear button, or uh, not necessarily underwear. A garment button, four holer. These are common. You find them at Gold Rush, all kinds of early history sites, colonial sites, whatever. Common, super common. It's got a maker mark, probably copper, bronze, whatever they make these out of. All right, let's see where this comes. That sounds pretty good. Yep, and it is a larger size one too. I should point out. Usually, you find these are smaller. Okay, so put that over there. So we've got some kind of junky jewelry here. This one is silver. So let's see where that guy comes in. Like that. Okay. What about this one right here? Which I'm not sure what this is. It might be silver. So let's see. So this one's broken, right? So that'll be interesting to see. And then we've got a non-broken ring we can test after it. Mm, 
really depends on how it's oriented, right? Which makes sense because this ring has this kind of big surface area. It's cut, right? So yeah, as I uh, reoriented it around the coil, it really came in differently. So just depends on that, how it's sitting in the ground. Which makes a lot of sense. Okay, so let's see here. Um, here's a ring that's not broken. I think this one is silver. Nothing, not even a peep. Wow. Okay, that's interesting. Um, this one I know is silver. So let's run this guy over it and we'll see. But this ring right here, it didn't even detect it. So, all right, let's see how this silver ring comes in. Of course it likes that. And again, it depends a little bit on the orientation of the ring, right? As to how solid it comes in, so. Okay, there's a little silver and turquoise button kind of thing. Yep, likes that. There's a couple little buckles uh, you would find if you were out relic hunting. These are the kind of things that you would get, so these are pretty common in Gold Rush sites and early California and other sites. Let's see what this guy hits. Solid 40, wow, real solid, and then it went for a long time, so deep. Okay, let's get this little buckle. <laughs> 21, nice, pretty good signal there. Here's a, a dog tag. Could just as easily be a work check, or these tags are pretty generic. Honestly, for a dog tag, it's not a great one, but just give you an idea how it comes in. This is from a Spanish mission period site. I don't know what it was originally for. Somebody hand-tooled and purposed Oops, this piece of uh, bronze. It's beveled on the edges and got a hole in the center. So uh, let's see how this sounds. That rings the bells of Notre Dame. That comes in like it's going to be a freaking dollar or half dollar. So, okay. Yeah, here's a lead poker chip. Let's see where that comes in. Those are always fun to find. See, soldiers or immigrants or settlers would smash down their bullets and make poker chips out of them. Or maybe checkerboard pieces or whatever. Likes that big old flat round. Thick disc. Okay. I think that concludes it. There's nothing else that exciting in my box here. So this is just to give you a general idea uh, of the tones and where things come in on the Equinox here. So again, it's just a test. I'm getting uh, my feet around this thing, getting my arms wrapped around how this thing works and all the settings, so I'm just playing with it, uh, checking things out, and as I go through this, I'm kind of taking you guys through my journey with me. Uh, I got this before, obviously I could publish any videos, so I'm, I'm basically documenting my journey here so I can share it with you guys once they give us the thumbs up that we can go ahead and release stuff. So. This weekend, I'm gonna be taking this thing out for its first time out in the field. This week's been super busy. Uh, but at any rate, I've got several sites planned. Uh, park, turf hunting, relic hunting, uh, maybe some beach hunting, uh, if the site looks okay. All different kinds of hunting planned, so we'll see how it goes. We had originally planned to hunt one site that got rained out this weekend and getting pummeled with rain. Um, that I was really hoping to take this to, but that didn't work out, so we had to change directions and go to a different area <laughs> where the weather's more cooperative.
You will see more videos in the future. This is just a quick rundown to give you a demonstration of where certain targets come in, right? These are just uh, types of things you find out in the field, um, or you want to find out in the field. So we just want to basically get our, our heads around where these targets are coming in. We have this new 60 point target ID system here. So we need to understand better, you know, what's the target range here? Where are the different segments of, you know, silver coins uh, versus mid-range and low-range type of conductors that you want to find when you're out in the field and this just gives us some kind of ideas on that so I will go through this similar test in park mode if I see any differences as far as like target ID or the tonal quality or anything uh, I'll make a separate video on that but if it's just the same <clears throat> as field uh, I'm not gonna video the same thing that would be kind of a waste of everybody's time Anyway, I will be back with more.